I'm Yogi Gupta, professor of physics and also the director of the Institute of Shock Physics. And I also happen to chair the graduate program in physics. What we do is we study the response of condensed materials to large amplitude shock waves. We produce dynamic high pressures and look at the changes these high pressures create in materials. We produce these shock waves in this lab using long gas guns as you're seeing in the, over here. But the impact experiments we do are the most convenient for a university setting. Uh, this is the oldest shock wave program in physics departments in this country and perhaps the best known one. Uh, we study things like chemical reactions in condensed materials. We study structural changes. We study deformations. And a key element of our work is we make measurements on phenomena as they happen. The time scales of interest to us range from a picosecond onto a microsecond. Furthermore, let me emphasize that these experiments are done as single event experiments. We have one shot. It takes about a week to build and requires a lot of care. Uh, it's a lot of fun to do these things, hard work, but we're learning a lot of science from it. Hi, I'm David Citrin and my group is the Semiconductor Optics Theory Group and we study primarily nonlinear optics and semiconductors. I recently chaired a conference in Coeur d'Alene that was uh, administered by the Optical Society of America entitled Radiative Processes and Dephasing Semiconductors. This international meeting dealt with recent advances in the area of semiconductor nonlinear optics. So once again, how very short pulses propagate through semiconductor media, how semiconductors respond to intense pulses, how the electrons and holes behave under radiation by lasers. And also, we were very interested in novel structures made out of semiconductors on the nanometer scale. Hi, I'm Steve Tomsvik. I'm a professor uh, here in the physics department at WSU. I do theoretical physics and run a theoretical uh, physics research group. My main interests include uh, understanding the correspondence between quantum and classical systems. We're interested in um, simple dynamical systems and say classical systems and especially uh, we're especially interested if they're chaotic uh, what kinds of things happen in the corresponding uh, quantum system. We're down here in the uh, tank room. We're part of the physical acoustics research group here at Washington State. And things we do down here, we've got these large tanks of water that uh, we perform acoustics experiments in. And typically, most of the experiments deal with uh, the scattering of sound off of solid objects and seeing how they respond. And this has applications to things like sonar and uh, medical imaging. And most of the work we do is for the Navy. And things we're doing in one of the tanks, we're uh, developing a means that we can image objects underwater using sound. And we're using that now as sort of a test to see if we can image uh, how some of our transducers, which are pieces of equipment we use to create sound underwater, see how those respond and how those are acting. 
Hi, my name is Gary Collins. I'm an associate professor in the physics department. My research is, an area, is in an area of solid state physics known as nuclear solid state physics. It's concerned with defects and the local structure in solids. Most materials around you in the world are crystalline. And uh, crystal, that means there is a regular arrangement of atoms in a structure. But uh, in reality, real materials have defects. This model is made with lots of very small ball bearings. And it illustrates a number of different features of, of crystalline solids. In uh, here, for example, is a fairly large crystal, uh, which is well ordered. There is a defect, however, over in this position. And if you look carefully, you will see that you can, you could form that defect by taking four atoms out and sticking two atoms back in. It's in fact a double vacancy or die vacancy. I'm uh, Tom Dickinson, and uh, I'm both in the physics department and in uh, the material science program. Um, so our research uh, is, is in the area of what we call surface dynamics. In the area of laser surface interactions, uh, we're interested almost uh, entirely in mechanisms that cause particles to come off of surfaces. Um, the applications uh, are in the areas of chemical analysis, uh, surface modification, changing the, the structures of surfaces, and thin film growth. Uh, the mechanical studies are in the area of tribology primarily. And uh, if you ask people if they know what the word tribology means, they don't know what it means. It's the area of study of wear and uh, friction. The experimental techniques we use uh, in both areas involve particle detection, uh, mass spectroscopy, uh, energy analysis, uh, emission and, and transmission spectroscopy and lots of uh, different kinds of atomic force and scanning probe microscopy. In our area of research we have approximately three different parts to the group and that is on positrons and where we've developed a unique capability at Washington State University and are performing measurements uh, unique to the world. The other part is looking at semiconductor crystals, in particular wide band gap crystals, and looking at their imperfections at these wide band gap materials. Hello, this is Mark Weber and we are working with positrons. Uh, we are using positrons to study matter like semiconductors to make uh, them better for future microprocessors and chips, so we have better computers in the future. When positrons and electrons come together, they will annihilate and send off two gamma rays. I'm Brad Pate here in the physics department. And my uh, principal area of research is electronic properties of surfaces and of the bulk. And the kinds of materials we've been looking at are wide band gap materials, principally diamond, but also cubic boron nitride and some of the other nitrides. Our interest ranges from the surface science and surface structure of these materials to the electron emission properties. This kind of work, uh, both the surface science work and the field emission work, and especially the field emission work uh, today, is quite interesting to a number of companies that are, are trying to commercialize uh, field emission displays to make very competitive video displays. Hi, uh, my name is Elisha Wang. I'm an associate professor in physics at WSU. Uh, I have a uh, joint appointment between WSU and the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. Uh, all my research labs are actually located at uh, the national lab. I do my teaching at the WSU Tri-City campus, which is a branch campus. Uh, but all my graduate students are still coming from Pullman. The technique we are using here is called the electrospray ionization technique. This is now a major technique in uh, uh, biomass spectrometry. Okay, this is how scientists put the proteins and DNAs into the gas phase is by using this electrospray ionization technique. Hi, my name is William Tor Williams. I'm uh, the head of the photonics laboratory here at Washington State University and I'm mainly involved in two projects. The first one is involves soliton dynamics. 
uh, solitons are playing now an important role in uh, telecommunications, optical communications. They're involved in optical fibers and they allow to increase the amount of information that you can put into an optical fiber. The uh, second project involves measuring physical quantities, and particularly electromagnetic quantities, electrical fields with very high resolution. As you can see in this monitor, we're trying to measure uh, a quantity, a physical quantity involving two electrodes separated by uh, just one micron. We've put together this uh, microscope system that is fiber coupled to uh, a laser. I'm Sue Dexheimer and my research area is femtosecond laser spectroscopy. My research group is working on a number of projects aimed at understanding the underlying physics of fast processes in electronic materials and also in molecular and biological systems. The current state of the art in time-resolved laser spectroscopy is on the femtosecond time scale, and our short femtosecond laser pulses allow us to study carrier scattering processes in electronic materials, as well as to directly time-resolve atomic scale vibrations in solids and molecules. One of our current projects is looking at the dynamics of photoexcited carriers in disordered semiconductors. These materials are important for a number of applications, including solar cells as well as optoelectronics, and there's also a great deal of interesting physics in their dynamics. We're also studying the physics of electronic processes in molecular-based electronic materials, as well as the physics of electron transfer in biological molecules. Hi, my name is Mark Kuzik, and I head the Nonlinear Optics Laboratory. The work in our laboratory is highly multidisciplinary, so we start from making materials, and from these materials we make samples. And one of the samples that we make are optical fibers. And then we take these optical fibers, and we do nonlinear optical measurements on these fibers, and we actually build devices. So our work, even though we do physics, and our center of mass is in physics, we start from the materials and go all the way over to the devices. To give you an idea of the kinds of work that we're doing, Nonlinear optics deals with very high intensity light. So the kinds of effects that we're into require very high intensities. And what we'd really like to do is to have a very, very bright light source that's focused over a long distance. So the way we do this is we use optical fibers. So in our laboratory, we, we make single mode polymer optical fibers. And we're the only lab in the world that can make these types of fibers. 